the conference goes right across uh, from uh, from meat, both uh, red meat, uh, cows, sheep, through to chicken and and uh, and fish, uh, and and then across into the dairy sector. And uh, obviously, um, when, once you get in the dairy sector, it's not just milk, it's all of those products that we consume which are made from that milk as well. The conference is at the University of Nottingham. The Not Nottingham has a number of campuses. Uh, and the one that the conference is actually going on is called the Sutton Bonington campus. And historically, that used to be our School of Agriculture. Uh, however, in the last 20 odd years, that has changed quite dramatically. It houses the School of Biosciences. And within that we have food scientists, we have nutritionists, both human and animal, and we have agriculture still. And then alongside us we have a, a relatively new vet school as well. Uh, so we are in this sort of unique position of bringing all of these people together. So we have that experience of talking to each other, which perhaps other nutritionists don't, of, don't often get the chance to do. I've been working alongside animal scientists for, for, for a lot of my career. and. Uh, We've often talked about the impact of, of, of animals on, on human nutrition. In the last five years or so, it's become a really uh, hot topic because it particularly con concerns about the environment and the impact of animal uh, agriculture on the environment. So we felt that it would be really exciting to bring together the two communities, the human nutrition community and the animal nutrition community. One of the messages we're being told is that we have to, uh, or potentially it would be beneficial to reduce our consumption of animal products the impact if we did that on agriculture would, would actually be quite dramatic. And equally, uh, we're, we're often told of the environment impact, environmental impact of growing animals in terms of their carbon footprint and producing methane and things like that. Anything that agriculture can do to actually reduce that uh, environmental impact obviously would be a major benefit. Cows, for example, produce methane. Methane is a greenhouse gas. But certainly uh, when I've talked to some colleagues in that area, one cow may produce a lot less methane than another one. We don't really understand completely why. And one of the things may be their diet, one of the things might be genetics. And exploring how uh, those areas and how we can minimise that effect is one area. The other area is what we feed those livestock. At the moment, a large proportion of the planet is taken up in growing crops, which actually never come to us. They go to the animals that we eat. And I think we have to be a bit more clever about that and finding alternative waste streams and... Uh, and uh, plants perhaps that we wouldn't normally eat uh, and potentially insects as well that we can feed to those animals rather than using things which could go directly into the human food chain. It's been very exciting. Uh, it's been an opportunity to actually make contact with people who have read their work, work about and you know we've been delighted that virtually all of them have said yes they want to come and they want to, want to contribute to the meeting. What we've, what we've tried to do is to bring as much as possible the world experts so we've got human epidemiologists who have done a lot of the studies looking at the effect of meat for example on our health. Uh, we've got uh, people in specialist areas such as growing insects and uh, there's a lot of interest in the, in the last couple of years potentially as insects as an alternative source of protein rather than animals and then along, alongside that more traditional agriculture more livestock and uh, dairy uh, uh, researchers so I think we've really managed to bring together the whole range of, uh, of, of people from, from, from the, the, the appropriate communities. The exciting thing about it is I think right across the spectrum of nutrition there should be something for, for everybody uh, I'm lucky, I work in an institute where, as I say, animal nutritionists and human nutritionists work side by side, but that's relatively rare. And the opportunity to actually talk about these things and debate these things and get, 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 you know, get a, a, a true handle on, on the story from both sides and try to come to some sort of consensus, I think, is, is a unique opportunity. Well, whenever you go to a conference, what, one of the main things that uh, comes out of it is that you get to talk to people who uh, you haven't had the opportunity uh, uh, perhaps in, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. There will be plenty of time during the conference, during uh, lunch breaks and coffee breaks, and we're having two social events. Well, we're, we're having a, a relatively informal one on the Tuesday night and a more formal dinner on the Wednesday night, and we very much hope that that will give everybody really the opportunity that they need to actually sit down and talk to people and, uh, and share their experiences and their research.